this tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Started with animation. Hello friends, today we'll do some rendering comparisons between the graphics card called GPU and the CPU which is the central processing unit of the computer. I created a helix as you can see it's a simple basically a default helix and I put it in a quite complex lighting uh, situation with five lights in this uh, kind of light domey atmosphere and nothing really fancy about it and I animated uh, one of the three rotation parameters with a function which is basically telling it to rotate all the time. When you select an object you see the attribute editor on the right hand side and when you render the scene you can uh, actually drop it on the right side, the render settings, uh, and just drop them somewhere. Yeah, when I drop it now I have the attribute editor below and when I close the render settings uh, the attribute editor will fill the whole right part of the window again. So this is the um, section where I switch between GPU and CPU and whenever I change the anti-aliasing settings like here in the CPU view they will change in the GPU as well so when I switch back here from between CPU and GPU uh, the anti-aliasing will just be consistent and in the GPU settings you only have the anti-aliasing now let's render this I'm rendering this with the CPU now and it takes ages as you can see fifty seven seconds almost a minute and now I render it with the GPU same image and on the bottom left you see that I stored the CPU rendering four seconds GPU the GPU is finished and look at the result so we can compare these two images and as you can see there's a lot of grain and noise in the GPU rendering but it is dramatically faster. So what we can do now is raise the anti-aliasing here. The GPU renders pretty fast again. Now it's finished and now when we compare the three of them actually the higher rendering settings, the anti-aliasing settings produce a very reasonable result which is comparable to the CPU rendering which took much much longer. Lambert shader CPU one minute oh four seconds Graphics card GPU 10 seconds AI standard surface shader CPU 4 minute 36 seconds GPU 25 seconds Depth of field CPU one minute six seconds GPU ten seconds but without texture 
motion blur with anti-aliasing 5 CPU 8 minutes 38 seconds GPU 45 seconds 10 times faster <laughs> I love Vokodis. Sorry about that. Let's continue now in a more serious fashion. When you apply a shader which is not supported by the GPUs, you see the GPU crossed out. For example, the Tune Shader. With the Tune Shader, the GPU rendering just renders the object which it understands, and the background, which is the Tune Shader in this case, is just kept gray. Whereas the CPU of course recognizes the tune shader and renders it okay. It doesn't look like a tune shader here, just wanted to give you the example where the GPU does not work. But it sort of works because it renders all the geometry which is supported by the GPU rendering. Now go to special effects because I want to check whether it renders particles. The GPU renders par n particles in this case. So I created an emitter from this object here. This is the CPU rendering of particles. I just stop it because I don't want to wait for the result. And now comes the GPU. Does it render particles? It needs to update the scene. That takes quite a while when you first start it. But the actually ren actual rendering process is pretty fast afterwards. Let's see what's coming out of it. Does the GPU render end particles? Good question. What we still see is the CPU rendering of the particles. And wow! pretty dark but basically the same so the GPU does render n particles it actually fails to render n particles and a lot of other things on a cheaper and older graphics card which via the firmware is is supported by the GPU rendering so it really depends on the graphics card you have now we have a liquid bifrost Let's render it with the CPU just to see whether the water or water-like substance is working and it sure is. You can see it in between, well in the center of the helix. It's a liquid. Oh, we, we do know that uh, it, the CPU does render that otherwise it would be just useless and I did several tutorials about fancy liquids rendered with the CPU. Now let's switch to the GPU. Again it needs to update the scene and the actual rendering process should be pretty fast. Does it render water? Oops, yes it does. Pretty dark again like the particles before but it's there and of course you can do lots of tweaking in order to get it properly transparent etc. Inviting to render a, a brief sequence with this short rendering time. Basically the rendering time per frame is one minute or maximum two minutes. At a very high resolution it's 4K. Well we know a little bit more about GPU rendering now with Maya and Arnold and uh, this is the end of July in 2019 and if you watch this a uh, couple of years later it will be totally obsolete because the advances in uh, graphic cards rendering and ray tracing is so drastic that uh, well I just say bye bye. <laughs>